sido. Kuching, and in Kuching, I um, 
I had a, you know, we had no roads in Kuching. We were roadless. Yeah. So the first guy who got a car, he was like, chicken egg, you know, I got a car. What do you have? Must, 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 must. We're going to drive it. Nice. So eventually we had to build cars. Then the first time we got a, the first time we actually got a flyover. Yeah, there was a jam, like for five days on the flyover. We never had a flyover. I remember, I mean, my, my sister and I were driving and I was like, I was like, look at this stupid people. I used to, like, I used to judge. I don't judge anyone. I don't judge anyone at all, except for Chinese guys. Because you, I'm also half Chinese, so I can tell my, you know, we can only do medicine, uh, you know, accounting, uh, engineering, uh, law, architecture, right? Then I want to do a social anthropology, can not? <laughs> Why? I don't know what is social anthropology. I don't, hey, Chan, your son doing what? Uh? Social, um, <laughs> business, uh, business, uh. <laughs> well, good, uh, good business, good, good, uh, good. Yeah. Hey, he's, doing, he's not a busy doing social anthropology. Huh? He's gay, is it? <laughs> so, <laughs> that's the problem. Us. I think the whole point is not to judge. Now, success, I, 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 I mean, we've all been banding success. You know, when you come on stage, you're like, huh, I'm successful. I'm here because I don't have an ego. <laughs> I'm not stroking my ego. Oh, look at me. I'm successful. Get on stage. No. When somebody, usually I give talks every, every week at universities, I always get these, these kids asking, and it's always a Chinese kid. <laughs> I'm not Chinese, huh? I can make fun of Chinese. But don't worry, I make fun of, I make fun of Malays too. And Indians. And gays, lesbians, and my <laughs> And transgender. You know why? Because we make fun of everybody, they can't get you on anything. That's my trick. Yeah? So I've heard the pub say, hey, how can you, oh, wait, me, oh, oh, how can you make fun of everybody? Okay, like, can you? <laughs> That's a left brain, right brain thing, by the way. So if you don't make jokes about anybody, and then one day you say, um, you know, that, 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 that day gets quite busy. <laughs> oh my god, it's the news. <laughs> right? I don't mean the same thing gets busy, I'm just saying, uh, Chinese, Chinese get busy. Or Chinese get stingy, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> Or oh, Indian, Indian guys, like, they, they won't work with anybody with the hang gangs, and they, uh, whatever. <laughs> it's good to be politically incorrect sometimes. So, one day, even, it even happened to me in my office. I had have, I have one lesbian, okay? And I walked in and I saw her, and she's very conservative. And I was like, ah, oh. uh, and they're like, oh, Jason, this is so and so from so and so, and she's wearing a suit. I was like, hi, and I knew she was lesbian, I have a very good gaydar, right? I knew she was, I was like, um, are you single? And she was like, uh, I don't see how that's relevant. I'm like, oh, just asking, you know? Sorry. <laughs> so I walked up and I'm like, watch out. A few weeks later, I walked in there and, and there was Nell. Oh, hi, Jason, this is Nell. She's a new head of digital we're looking for. I'm like, hi, Nell. Oh, get up. I'm like, how do you guys feel? And she's like, yeah. I was like, Single, take him to the, uh, I'm in a relationship. I'm like, good. She's like, mm, not bad. I'm like, excellent. Welcome on board. And on the way out, I said, make sure she sits next to the girl in the suit. <laughs> and after a few weeks, the girl in the suit comes in, no more student. Sunglasses, hi. Late night is you know? So I believe in, uh, I believe in non discrimination. But, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we can't talk about things, yeah? So Chinese guys do always ask me success because there's this thing. The fine, you know, accounting, finance, and whatever. Right? Excuse me, how to be successful like Tony Fernandez or Richard Branson or, or uh, you know, Bill Gates? I'm like, I always say, why don't you ask your mother? <laughs> My mother. Uh, why? My mother is only a housewife. Huh? I said, yeah, she's successful, right? She had you, you had a brother, sister, or two sister. So are they okay? They look, you guys look, you look fine? Is she not a success? I said, how to compute? I cannot compute this because I have been talking about like, hold on, hold on, and they, they panic. And then I always say, have you asked uh, Zulkifli? And of course, some way in college is like, who's Zulkifli? <laughs> the security guard. Oh, do you know he's successful? Huh? But he's just a security. I don't know. Have we spoken to him? You know, he has three sons. He sent all three sons to university. Islam. Yeah? 
and he sends money back to his wife every month in our star, okay? And he goes back twice a month to visit her. Probably for what I don't know, but <laughs> I said, he seems happy. He's always laughing. You think he's successful? And then they're like, I don't know how to do it. I feel uncomfortable. Yeah. You don't have to go to Yale or Harvard or Princeton or you know, University of Hull, which I'm into. Well, I'll do Cambridge Hall. You don't have to go to these places to be successful. Yeah? To be successful, you have to look for success. If that's what you want. If you want the success, then go and success up. Then you, the only time you can be successful, and I believe this, is when you look back on your life, on the last day of your living, on the deathbed, on your deathbed, like when Steve Jobs rose up, and he was like, Ugh. or when Kurt Cobain sang that song, and he was when he sang, and he was like, yeah. it seems like he was looking at his life. They, 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 they say that was his moment of, of realization. Yeah. What's success? To, to me, as a kid, I wanted three things in my life. Yeah. Number one, I wanted to be the first Malaysian on Billboard. Okay? Okay, you see Abby got the first, Yuna and all the rest of those. You know, yeah. okay. So they got the first. So I thought, okay, so I, so, I, so I didn't get that. But you know what? I did get to the Pepsi chart. Okay? 10 minutes and give me a break. Um, so I did get the Pepsi. I was, I was the first Malaysian on the hits, Malaysian Top 10. I'll do that. And I also wanted to be the first Malaysian to play at Wembley. Okay, so I did get at Wembley, fine. But I did create Rock the World and play in front of maybe, you know, 10, 20,000 20, people. At Batu Baha, I played in front of like 50,000 people, man. Batu Baha. Oh, so much money. Sorry. Wait, that is. Okay, so. And, and my third goal, I wanted to be the. F I, wanted, I wanted 20 albums before I die. 20 albums, yeah. I'll say that in Chinese. 20. <laughs> Probably. Uh, 20. <laughs> oh, Indian. I'm sorry. Thank you. So, I'm four albums and still going, okay? So, my whole point is that. So, these are platforms that you build. But I can't reach that. That was my goal. Yeah. But tell me what, you know? I, I, I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm trying, I'm trying to reach that. Don't worry, don't be in the rain. I won't die. Even if I fall, I won't die. It's my deathbed. I'm about to die. Hey, guess what? So is that a wall? So. My whole point is that on the time of your death, you're like, hey, I'm no longer on the ground. <laughs> so this is my success. Right? And when you die, you go, oh, okay, I reached this point. Okay, I killed someone, you know, so I'm a murderer, so I'm not successful. No, that, that would be me down a bit, but whatever it is, the point is that you build assets, you build platforms, and each platform raises you up to try to reach that star, that light. I can't reach it. But if I build these platforms, I'm no longer on the ground. You have to imagine standing on it without being dead. You know? Like, like, so this is success to me. To me. This is, all this stuff is success. This is a success. Wait. That was not unsuccessful. <laughs> so, I made a point, and can someone clear these chairs? What's wrong with you people? So, I'm sorry. So, I'll pay for that. Don't the chair. So, my point is, don't get carried away with the word success. Yeah, I know it's a it's a word that is ingrained in us. You must be successful. Can you please successfully take these chairs off the? <laughs> Let's see how successful you are. So, so thanks for trying to fix that on stage. <laughs> so my point is, success is not a word that I, I can relate to. I don't understand it. You know? Do you think there are successful people in government? Yes. 
<laughs> you do? Ooh. <laughs> I'm the, and hats off to Mark. Um, you know, uh, I'm the vice president of the Maryland Council. And five years ago, I said to my team, I said, we're going to win our first goal for the country in the Olympics for Paralympics. Now, attitude is more important than success. Attitude. And that's why, Mark, I don't mean to be rude here. I really, I really, I, I respect a lot what you do, but I gotta say that the government's too easy to blame. Go in, go in, go in, go in, okay? If everyone says something, I'm the guy who will say the opposite. Always. Najib is the best thing that could happen for Malaysia. Right? Who agrees? You agree? Why do you agree? He could bring the downfall of being a good See? He's, he has an opinion. Something like that. But. <laughs> so, you see, that guy, to me, is. What's your name? That guy? Wouldn't it be funny if the name was that guy? <laughs> so he, 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 he kind of gets it. Because we imagine we had a problem, you know, my name is the man X or that. He was singing and doing something. And we never saw it. So in a, in, a, in, in a sense, imagine if this was ever brought to light. There's always a silver lining in everything, okay? So never look upon things as being, as, as, as being, uh, you know, just because everyone's going one direction, always go that direction. And somehow, because God and I are pretty tight, so God, or Allah, or, or his real name, which is, yeah. Okay. So we're pretty tight, we like each other. And he told me five years ago, six years ago, we're going to win. Paralympics, but the Paralympics. And I said, no, that cannot be. And we did. Okay? Now my duet doesn't work, but just, 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 just bear in mind. Bear, bear, bear in mind. Bear with me if you can. Yeah? I want to show you something. Something to you. Yeah, no, I actually need that. Okay. So, who here knows what happened in the Paralympics? You got the first goal. Nobody. Does anybody know what happened in the Paralympics? Three goals. Three goals. Okay, good. Three goals. Do you know that's the only three goals you've ever won? Yes. Ever as a nation? Yes. Right. Are you not proud to be part of a country in which our first gold medals were won by a bunch of Tata guys? Eh? Huh? By the Tata. First it was Tata, which means you know, cripple in Malay. And then it changed to Orang Kurang Bayo. So not Tata, not, not, crip, not cripple or handicap, but people who are less than others. Then we changed that for, oh, this is politically incorrect, I okay, cannot. So we changed that to Orang Kalainan Rupaya, people with different abilities. Which is better. But far as I had the comms came with a wonderful, wonderful thing, which was called um, Kami Lua Biasa. And Kami Lua Biasa means we are extraordinary. And in every sense of the word, the most extraordinary thing happened. Yeah? And we created, a, we created a reality TV series called uh, Missing. The Malaysian Invasion, Spirit Emotion, yeah? And I really want to address one of this because this is one of the most, this is the biggest moments of my life, really. Missing is incredible because of what it is. And, um, yeah. Um, wait, is there one? Yeah. Yes. Thank you.
responsibility to transform communities, countries, and continents. Serious, really? I think I can cut, I can stop it now, you keep going. Keep going? Yeah, okay, it's important, it's important. Because the, the important thing is not to judge. Okay? I'm crying because I was one of crying on my chat. But the saddest thing about humans is that we judge too easily, we judge too quickly, you know? That was that was the, the video. This was my my view. And I'm trying I'm trying to be all proper like uh this gentleman. Because we're going live, you know? I'm like uh, trying to commentate. I'm like, oh, this, is the this, is the, this is the moment when Malaysia won our first gold medal. I'm very proud to be a country that, that won our first gold medal by a super ballsy sprinter. Imagine that, that, imagine that as a country, you can say that. And he won a million ringgit just like a normal athlete. No more. An able body. Yeah. In Singapore, the, the athletes, the athletes still get less than uh, able body athlete. But I don't believe there's able body athlete. I, I look, if you have one leg, you have one leg. It's okay. Yeah. All of us in this room are disabled. Right? We're all, all disabled in some way. Look at our politicians. You think they're not disabled? At the Olympic level. They look up in the Paralympic conditions. So I'm here we are and uh, you can hear me. here we are, here we are. Uh there's China. Oh, oh, oh. And come on and you're trying to be all articulate, right? But the truth is this boy I, I wasn't prepared. Well last night, they didn't play around with himself. Um so that's your problem. Because we had done a, a TV program called Mission on RTM. We did it on TV One. And my team said, TV One, why we do it? Because I wanted it to reach the Rayas. But we went around the whole country because if you're blind, how would you know where to play the next fo the football tournament? And the C games, Malaysian team won number one. We came we came first for sight impaired uh, category, yeah. Four star. Um, I thought it was Malaysia. I was like, oh shit, it, you know. But it wasn't. It was Ukraine. And but going back, going back, going back to the episode. So, TV one, my team said, okay, we'll tar our target is 80,000 viewership. I said, no, 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 we're going to hit half a million. And they said, half a million, no way. I was wrong as well because we hit 800,000 viewers per episode. Yeah? 
on Saturday in half an hour episode. Yeah. Even RTM was like, what the hell's going on? We made a damn production team. So, if that's, if that's the case, then, uh, then it is important to understand that to judge people is the biggest mistake and the biggest road to non success in life. I don't judge you. I don't even know if you're Chinese or not. You could be not, you know. Okay, so. Non Chinese. <laughs> you could be Mongolian. So try not to judge. That's the biggest problem in Malaysia, we judge. So, and the judges need to learn their to own journey and judge. And realize that it goes nowhere. Judge, blame, it doesn't go anywhere. You know? What goes everywhere is to say that, yes, we can do it. We can find a way. Look, we're an NGO, we have no money. We had four million. When I joined, it was gone. The, 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 last chem, the last president put it in some fund in Florida and it went away, it disappeared. After all those episodes, we went around the country. We found somebody to come and take. You know, uh, we, we found we found uh, guys who were going to go for the Sea Games, the Park Games, um, and we wanted to discover new talent. Yeah, I had no idea. I didn't know what would happen if we did not actually achieve some sort of a a, 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 a win. You know, and I say to, I say this to anybody who loses. I say you, you are not uh, you, winning or losing. You, you, you're not a fighter because you win or lose. You're a fighter because you fight. You're not a runner. Because you run, you know, because you run because you win or lose. You run because you run. You get back on the track and you run right every single day, and and that I think is, is the spirit of, of Simon. This was a, this was a message on the day of, of our of our win. And it's middle day. Bye bye. So thank you, thank you so much, guys. Everyone, everybody, everybody. Good luck to the athletes. It is a big day for us. No, because you could win. We could win. Medals. Of course, thanks to everybody at MSN, Mr. Sports, and um, our chairman, the Crowley Council. Good luck, everyone. In Malaysia, you can tune in to Crowley TV, follow the action, <laughs> hashtag MISIN, M I S I N, and um, follow us on Facebook. And, um, and thanks to everyone, too, Doc. Thanks, I'm Jace. And, nice <laughs> and um, giving, this, giving, giving this a shot, you know, it's important to get behind our athletes. Good luck. So I said, I said, because of. <laughs> Thank you, it wasn't me. I said this because, uh, because it was, and, and you know, the response was incredible. I mean, this was, this was, there was you know, it actually hit 1.2 billion, you know? The, 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 the um, I always think that, I think it's important, never judge someone by the opinion of others. Opinions don't matter, accountability does, yeah? And I'm not, I never give presentations, this is why I'm a little bit. But I just want you guys to know that, that it's, it's very important, because shit happens, yeah? But how, how we react to it is, is, it tells the most about ourselves. Now, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a technical guy, I suppose, guy. I believe in this. I said, look, let's put, you know, in MMA, I said, let's put two top on our asses. No brand wants to put two, wants to put their brand on the ass because obviously, you know what comes out of that, right? So, but the branding it got us was incredible. And in fact, last night we had a team, the first Malaysian went for a, for a win. Um, he lost, unfortunately, but it was something spectacular. So, I want to show you all this, but I'm just going to, I'll just get on later. So, I wanted to impress upon you guys this, that, that, that in life, things will come and go. Uh, you must be prepared for what happens if things don't go well, you know? And always keep, always keep yourself, okay, for anyway, always, keep your, always keep your mind open, yeah? I show you the pattern because to me, that is my, that, that's one of the things I'm involved in, which, which uh, uh, is one of the most challenging things and one of the most uh, 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 rewarding things I've ever done in my life, okay? And, 
And I, I, Mark, I feel you, it's difficult, you know, because there's no money. Like I said, four million was gone and we went into without any money. But there are other ways. I was being kissing. I got no money, I got no funds, how I start a business. We, I had no handphone. We grew up with nothing. We didn't have internet, we had nothing. But we always go the other way. You always look for, you know, you guys have so much kickstarted, there's so much opportunity now. You have no idea the, the power you have. If I broke down every cell in my body, okay, I could power a rocket from here to Mars 27 times. So much energy you have inside of us. real energy, pure energy of chemical bonds, okay? Now, I may look like an idiot and stuff like that, but actually, I'm a pure genius. And I say that with, I say that with, no, with no false modesty, okay? <laughs> I'm always trying to do the other thing and people laugh. When, I, when, we, when I first started Tune Talk, right? I did, Tony Fernandez came and said, Jace, I want you to help me start, you know, set up my mobile company. And I said, Tony, I don't know anything about mobile. And Tony says, well, I didn't know anything about airplanes. <laughs> you know? And Tony's in the music industry and so am I. But in the music industry, I'm a songwriter. I write music. You start with a white blank sheet of paper. You've got to write something, an idea. Whether it's your first lay or your first kiss or whatever, you're going to write down all your You're going to find a band and, and record it. All these things are creating something from nothing. Ideas are our biggest assets. Not buildings, not cars, not wives, okay? <laughs> Ideas are the biggest assets you can have. And anyone in this room can generate an idea. One idea is a spark. And a spark needs to light up the whole. You can light up anything. And I'm telling you, I would, I, and, and credit you guys to be here today because you guys, you guys obviously are looking and searching for something and, le and trying to learn. And, and the day I, I, I believe is the day I'm ready to die is when I, I stop learning. I always believe that they asked the Dalai Lama, what's the meaning of life, the purpose of life? And he, I love the way he asked, he responded. He was like, it's obvious, you idiot. You know, he was like, to, to be useful. You know? And I thought, Yalla, ask yourself how useful you are. If you ask yourself every day and say, how can I be useful? How can I be useful today? Yeah. I believe it's very important to show consideration and appreciation. In my boarding school, we couldn't have dinner. When we first joined, Mr. Green put these cards, he said, make two words and then ignore the dinner. One word was consideration and appreciation. It does not work separately, it must work together. If you have a beggar, beggar says, give me some change. You're like, oh, okay, oh, I, I can consider that you need money here, but I don't appreciate you. That's wrong. Consider and appreciate each other. And I promise you, you have the power to unlock anything. You may have no money, you may be, be, be millions of debt or whatever, it doesn't matter. If you have ideas, you have drive, you can achieve anything. And I'm not here to rah rah you. I'm just here to tell you that from, the, from day one, I have, I'm, I'm, I'm the guy who looks at me and says, yeah, you're this way. And I'm always prejudged. Because I'm clown, you know? <laughs> you know? And then I will always get that line when I say, hey, so I go, I'm like, geez, I'm not, I'm not anthrax, man. I'm like, you know, I, I did something called, one, one day there was a, there was a, a Jais or Jai Jai, they went into a, a Taoist funeral and they took out a body, which was about to be cremated. They said, we believe this woman has converted Islam, so we're going to take it away. The mother fainted. A week before that, they had gone into a, a temple during a Hindu wedding and they took a woman who was getting married out saying, she's Islamic, she's Muslim, cannot be married. Now what gives religious police the right to go and do that? It's ridiculous. And I waited and nobody said anything. This woman was Indian, 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 eh? She had the dog in the head and everything, Indian, Indian, Indian. Okay? She was, she was, she could speak, I mean she wasn't the truth. But she was, you know, she, she, she didn't realize her father had converted to Islam before and they stuck in the middle of it. Imagine the Christians went into a Muslim wedding and said, oh, we, are, we believe this woman is actually Christian. Let's they take to her out. There'd be war, man. So don't judge because it makes this, And you know, I wrote down, I said, I think it's time to remove Islam from IC. Hashtag remove Islam from IC. And everybody, I got a call. I got a call. My best friend is Kari Jamal, who once was a hated man, but now everyone knows him. His, his, Dax, one of his guys, his thug, Dax, Dax is like his, his go-to guy. Just, just look, take, take it down, take it down. I'm like, take one down. Take down your Islam, I see thing. I'm like, why? He said, dude, it's going crazy. And it went viral. And everyone was telling me, I'll kill you, I'll throw shoes at you and your family, your father will burn in the fire, all this sort of thing. I'm like, what the heck is wrong with you people? You know? And I waited, I waited. Patience is a virtue. I waited until someone said, screw you, Jalo, and your damn religion. And I said, screw Islam? Oh, you said screw Islam? I said, no, you said screw Islam. What? What are you talking about? I said, I'm Muslim. You are Muslim? 
<laughs> yeah, here it, it says it on my IC. <laughs> Must be. <laughs> It's like, yo, oh, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> what is the issue, my brother? Like, that, that small mindedness is why we stop ourselves. Because we fear, all of us in this room are afraid. If you're not afraid, then you're lying, because we're all afraid of something. And that fear is what stops creativity. Yeah? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. When I first went to talk, I said, guys, Let's go for it. And a wave of, of anti-you or a wave of hatred may build up, but like all waves, they always crash on their own wave if you give it time. Islam from IC was like, oh, we hate it, we hate it. And then when they found I'm Muslim, they're like, eh. In fact, the Imams was on my, they were on my side, they said, stop fighting this guy, lah. Don't, don't worry, he is. No need, no need to fight your brother, you know? So I, I experienced this many times. We, you know, we set up the Malaysian invasion, Myanmar. So the MMA is big. What, you know, years ago, my head of marketing came to me and said, are we a music company because you do concerts? Because all we do is concerts. I said, yeah, we're a music company. We're a concert company. Because she couldn't understand why we didn't promote rates. Two cent, five cent, 50 cent, two cent, eight cent, five cent, five cent, five cent. It makes no sense. Yeah? DJ Maxis are doing this to you right now. And you're like, yeah, okay, I'll pay whatever you need. But you don't know what you're paying. Right? So I said, rather than that, let's relate. So I went and, and I went ahead and said, let's do concerts. We did Justin Bieber, we did Paramore, we did Death Toes. You know, we did everything. And our eyeballs went from 22% to like 80% in the space of like two years. And then people were like, oh, cool. Because you relate to that. Then we did MMA, we did mixed martial arts, and everyone, my, my head of marketing said, are we an MMA fund company? I said, yes, we're an MMA company. Because it builds communities, yeah? When you build communities and you do things that make change, it makes a different impact on the world. And then I said, we're going to the Paralympics. And my, I remember my CFO, my head of sales said, nobody watches Paralympics. And I said, well, we're going to start running and we're going to, maybe we'll watch after that. And we had three gold medals in 24 hours. I was hoping for one, yeah? And, and everything you do is going to change, and is always trying to look at what we can do to change mindsets. Do not judge. Be very careful with how you, how you look at people, because it's so easy to judge. And that's where that's when you will leave. You see, that's when you begin to fear. Fear is a path to the dark side. Yeah. George Lucas had it. Remember, when you're young and you're left in a shopping center by yourself, mommy, daddy, mommy, mommy, uh, you get afraid of abandonment. When you grow up, that fear becomes ingrained in your brain. It's it's like a red zone. Don't go there. Then you become a jealous person, a needy person. Then you get a boyfriend, you're like, what are you, what are you, what are you, I'm crazy, like, I love you, I love you, I love you, come back, come back, And the boyfriend's like, oh my god, this cycle gave me away from her. No, no, don't go, don't go. So your fear of losing someone will end up with you being alone and losing someone, right? I guess panicking because I'm, I'm pretty good on stage. Two minutes. Okay, two minutes, okay, two minutes. <laughs> so. Achievement, I'm not going to brag about my achievements at all. I'm only here to say that if a bunch of guys, if a guy with three promotions can be the first guy to win a gold medal, at, at, you, we, we have never sung the national anthem at an Olympic stadium before. And I tell you, I went all night to all the guys, Malaysia's first gold medal, and when, when we sang the song, like, every, the whole stadium sang, they all stood up and honored Malaysia. And we all cried, we were like, we're all crying. Yeah, because it, and it never occurred to me that we wouldn't do it. Yeah, Mima, this is Malaysia Legend Season 5. Next, next month in Singapore, okay? Last night was our first World Title Challenge and we won, like, we should have won. But because it was in the Philippines against the Philippine champion, I think it was a little bit, you know, but anyway. Next month in Singapore, Aguila Tani, who was so poor, a poor kid who would live in Sundal, who, you know, was fat, he was 120, 20 kilos, he got beaten up on the way home, he was scared. He lived in the gym because he, he couldn't eat, really and he started training. He has, he ended, he's our Mima 2 champion. Mima 2 is a Malaysian vision MMA, right? You can, we do trials at shopping malls. Just like I did, we did my team. We went all around the whole country to look for people. You can go, you can go and try out, you can go and try out, and if you're good, you'll get through. Aguil and Danny went, and, and we didn't know who the hell this kid was. And that category, the waterway, he beat our national black belt champion. And the guy beat him like hundred times, and we're like, who the hell is this kid? And he's now one, he, so I begged him, I said, please go pro. I begged with the queen uh, from, from one of the seat. Can we, can please, I, we need a, we need a, this guy's good. 
and he's seven wins and zero losses. Yeah, pro. And next month in Singapore, he goes after Ben Askren. Ben Askren is an American Olympian. He is the ex Bellator champion, and he's unbeaten, fought 15 and 0. And he is against Adan. Can you imagine? And a kid from Suntol fighting against and Ben Askren is, to me, pound for pound, the best wrestler in the world, bar none. This guy is, is the epitome of wrestling. Yeah? And the cage is the only place where you can go. Jiu Jitsu can fight, they wonder whatever. A Malaysian is going to fight him in the, in the co in the co main event for the belt. Yeah? That enables us to believe. And belief is an asset, it's a good currency. It's like pounds or euro or USD. It's not like ringgit. Ringgit, ringgit is, you know, being cynical. Yeah. That's why nobody wants ringgit. It's a cynical currency, right? It's like, yeah, sneak it. But when you walk into a room and you have belief on you and you have all that, people notice. And because you believe in someone, that's all you need. When I, was, when, I, when I was a student, I remember driving up to Harlem in Brazil with my dad and I played my demo tape for two hours. I didn't tell him what it was. He was talking about Chelsea, blah, 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 blah eating pies, you know? And I said, Dad, what do you think of my music? So what do you think of the, the music that I was playing? And he said, what music? I said, the, the music is it's okay. I said, he said, why? I said, that's my band. He said, he said, that's your band? I said, yeah. He then played the music full blast all over again, listened to every song. And for me, I know some people don't have that opportunity for someone to believe in them. But when someone believes me like that, that gave me all I needed to go and release them. Right? So I don't have 20 albums, but I have four and I'm working on more, okay? And every step of the way, I try to keep an open mind, be kind, be considerate and appreciate everything. And I promise you, you will eventually find a way to wherever you're trying to get, or wherever you don't even know you're trying to get. Okay? So, I didn't have such a short talk, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to do this in a second. But I would like to thank you very much for this time. And of course, to Zig, to Zig you're a good, good man, man. You know? Good. I have to say, this guy's amazing. To bring light, to bring light, literally you bring light to people, and light also means many things, you know? And you look like you, you look like you're homeless, but you know you're, I know you're not. <laughs> you know, you know it's, just, it's, a, it's a style that you know the, the cheapest cat you fly, you know, I'm shaved, but I'm camped. But of course, before it comes to like, I want to be as camped as possible, you know. So credit to you, and you know that's why it's one of the Forbes, you know, top 40, under 20, you know, leaders, 30, top top 12 year olds in the world. Whatever. So thank you, thank you very much.